By now, you're probably well aware of the new AI art generator called Midjourney that has exploded in popularity over the past few months. Today, we're going to show a quick example of how you can pair your Midjourney still images with After Effects to create some pretty cool visual effects. First, we're going to hop into Midjourney on Discord and type in a prompt that's as descriptive as possible to what we have in mind. In this example, I'm thinking a mythical Pandora like landscape with waterfalls. So I'll type slash imagine to open a prompt dialog. And then I'll type something like avatar. Pandora, mythical landscape, waterfalls, extraterrestrial, cinematic, cloudy, photorealistic, space, dash, dash, AR, space, 16 by 9 for the aspect ratio, and hit enter. Midjourney will start generating us four versions of what it thinks we're looking for, and you'll more than likely need to do this process a few times with different prompts to find something that you like. Once you have it, you can hit the upscale button, and the bot will upscale the resolution for you. Next, we'll hop into After Effects and create a comp and title it Main. For this effect, we generated two plates, one for the background and one for the foreground. Then make a pre-comp for each plate, calling them Background Comp and Foreground Comp, respectively. Next, we'll go into the Background Comp and drag and drop in our waterfall overlay. For this, we're using a waterfall asset we got from Production Crate. Right-click and go to Time and Time Stretch to slow down the speed of the clip and add frame blending to smooth it out. After that, we'll pre-comp the waterfall layer and call it waterfall. With scale and position, we'll place the layer over one of the waterfalls in the scene. Mask around the top of the layer and add a good amount of feathering to smooth the transition. Add a soft light blending mode to blend better with the background plate. Then you can use the curves or lumetri color effects to further tweak and color match with the plate. Next, we'll use the puppet pin tool to shape the waterfall with the waterfall in our image. You could also use the mesh warp plugin to get the same result. Mask out any obstructions that are in front of the waterfall and feather, then simply repeat the process for all other waterfalls in the scene. To add a touch more realism, we'll grab our fog layer that we also got from Production Crate and add some low forming moisture to the scene. Like the waterfall layer, scale and position the fog to your liking, mask and feather, and tweak the mask shape until satisfied. Adjust the layer opacity down and use curves for color matching if needed. Next, we'll jump into our foreground pre-comp. For this image, all we want is the rock cliff in the foreground. And for this example, we want it flipped, so right click, go to transform, flip horizontally. Grab the background pre comp and place it under the foreground plate for composition referencing. Mask out the rock cliff and add a slight touch of feathering. About two pixels is all we need. Then scale and position to taste. For this, we wanted a bit of humanity, so I filmed myself on a green screen to comp into the scene. Grab the green screen footage and drop it into a new comp and rename it to Keyed. We don't need all this extra space since I'm not moving around in the frame. So we'll click the region of interest button, select only the area that we want to keep, then go up to composition and choose crop comp to region of interest. This will adjust the pre comp size down to only the area that we need. Next, we'll key out the green using key light, select an area of green close to the subject and set the view to screen matte. Adjust the clip black and clip white until the subject is pure white. In this case, the stool isn't perfectly keyed, but that's okay because we'll mask this out anyway. Set the view to intermediate result, and then add key cleaner to clean the edges and advanced spill suppressor to remove any green spill. Next, add the keyed pre-comp to the foreground comp. Mask out the stool and add a touch of feathering, then scale and position on top of the cliff edge. Duplicate the foreground layer and mask around the leg and then place above the keyed layer. Then we'll add a bit of shadow to better ground the subject into the scene. In our case, we're using the Red Giant VFX Shadow plugin for a quicker result. Now, unfortunately, the images that come out of Midjourney aren't yet the best resolution, so there are some discrepancies between my camera footage sharpness and the images. We can add a touch of unsharp mask to the rock cliff layers to try and help sharpen it up, but not too much. Hopefully, Midjourney images have better resolution as time goes on, but for now, it's still a great tool regardless. Now we'll finally jump back into our main comp and change both the foreground and background layers to 3D layers. This will allow us to scale and position them in 3D space and to add some camera movement and parallax. Push the background back in Z space and rescale up, then scale the foreground up just a bit and position. Next, add a 3D camera layer and keyframe the position along the Z axis, as well as the focus distance and aperture to bring the foreground more into focus as the camera backs up over time. This will add a touch more realism as if it was actually filmed on a camera. To add even a bit more life to the scene, we grabbed a few bird layers from Production Crate. First, open the background comp and add one of the layers to the scene. Flip horizontally and time stretch just a little bit so the layer plays through the entire timeline. Then add frame blending. Open the foreground layer and place the second bird layer underneath. The last thing we'll add is a little bit of atmospheric lighting to tie it all together. For this, we used the Optical Flares plugin from Video Copilot. Now this is a paid plugin, so if you don't have it, this won't work for you but it's definitely one we recommend as it comes in handy for a lot of things. 
Create a solid and add the optical flares plugin. Set the render mode to on transparent and position the light where you want it in the scene. Then click on options. Here we will go into presets and find a lighting style that fits well with our scene. Real sun looks good, so we'll select and hit okay. You can adjust and customize these presets as much as you want, but for this example, this works fine as is. Change the layer into a 3D layer, adjust the position in Z space in front of all the other layers, adjust the scale and brightness of the light to taste and reposition if needed. And to finish things off, go back in and adjust the color of any layers as needed, add some overall color grading, and then hit render. 